What's up? Name's Rec. I'm a coach. This is the rest. How you doing? <clears throat> Today we are reviewing another Camille. Shout out to the folks at Camille Mains for being awesome and uh, flooding my DMs with videos. I'm definitely still taking on more, so don't even worry about it. It doesn't even have to be Camille. You can do whatever you like. But yeah, we're doing all those good VOD reviews. Now, let's see. Right. So, runes, we have Grasp of the Undying, Shield Bash, Bone Plating, and Revitalize, and then secondary has got Boost Biscuits, and then standard shards here. Now, double adaptive might be alright into the Fiora matchup, because you be go if you can usually go W and just like get a bit of early poke out, but given their team comp as well, I would really suggest going on Flinching instead of Revitalize. I know you would want the Shield for the extra bit of trading there, but I feel like you would just, with Leona Amumu, like, oh, <laughs> It's a, <laughs> definitely a consideration to look at that, but yeah, just as a note, probably look at considering those. Other than that, though, we're looking at a pretty good time otherwise. Now, the only problem with, with the spectator video, as we're seeing here, is I don't really get a full idea of what's going on in regards to movement. We're just watching him move, essentially in a direction and going from there. No real like change that we can work with otherwise. So kind of just have to figure it out from square zero and just quite try to guess his like movements and camera options. As long as he's not using lock camera, I'm not really worried about it. But also I do want to just make note, if you're going to start leveling Q and you're going to hard push the wave like this, you have to at least get all the CS. There's no point in even trying to be like remotely annoying in this lane if you're going to miss CS, especially like that. Like that's just... That's just silly CS missing. There are so many better things you can do for it, you know? Now, you've rushed level 2 here, and that's a good thing. It's not even an issue. And given, like, the aggro-ness of this, you've got to, you, you've gone ahead and warded a 2, so this is good. Um, I'd consider warding try if you're, like, curious about the, the route that a Mumu was taken, but this is still a safe route considering you have E. But yeah, if you were worried about the state of this lane and getting ganked early, I would strongly consider just going W, then E, then Q. Or just not taking any abilities at all and just starting your CS until you like figure out where the jungler is or what to do with that and then just take E if necessary. But yeah, either way, this is still fine. I would rather you still have some CS in the pocket here, considering that you went for the aggro push angle. But yeah. It's a good W to get away from that. But yeah, you're only lucky in the sense that you actually get the level 3 right as you're walking off and can E out. But, yeah. And plus, you don't get caught in the in the process by a Mumu either, so you're kind of lucky on that. I feel like if a Mumu waited out, he definitely caught you. And I don't really know why we're roaming out of lane so quickly here, especially when you're trying to maintain the lead that you have against Fiora, or at least your level, your experience lead, if anything, but roaming all the way out here, while it may seem like a good idea in the short term, you're not gaining anything from it, and the wave is coming back to you, and you are still missing CS from that by default. Like, you don't really gain anything from walking in and out of lane like this. You're down 8 CS, the wave's still pushing towards Fiora, you don't have anything to, like, gain from this, and you're still missing CS by default. Taking a trade inside the wave like this is not particularly a good idea. You are lucky that, like, Hecarim is on his way. Because if the, if you were alone here, this was an instant loss. There's no, like, ways around that. So, good thing Hecarim's smart for this. But, yeah. I assume he's going to help you push this into turret, which is a good thing. I mean, not great for your personal CS if you miss it, but, yeah. At least you got the cannon, and you get out in time. So, the problem here is that obviously, yeah, he has to spend teleport to come back and get the CS. But look at the CS difference still. You're still not, like, perfectly ahead given your absolute stumping of an early game by walking out of lane. And, sorry, pardon the narcolepsy. Um, you're kind of caught out in really awkward situations by just, A, walking out of lane at a bad time. And B, not taking any, like, sort of precaution against, like, your own hard shove by not even properly CSing. Like, those are two things you have to properly do. There's no, like, getting around that. You have to properly manage your wave. Always. 
at least by just CSing it. If you're going to do exactly what you did there without CSing effectively, nor taking and not taking shitty trades in the middle of his wave, you would probably be ahead on your own without the need for a jungle gank. However, you, the fact that you got an assist in lane, he already has more gold than you do by default, but you have the laning presence because you have the Doran's Blade. So that's okay, but you can't fight inside his minion wave for the second time running. And if you even plan on doing this again, I'm going to pull my hair out. So please don't do this. Please. I am begging you. Just freeze it here so that he's worried about, like... Hecarim gank, if anything. I don't know what we walked all the way out of lane for for a second there. He almost walked out of experience range for nothing. He wasn't even poking you. <sighs> hmm. CSing on the turret needs work. Even when you have the Doran's Blades, you, you are able to one-hit range creeps under the tower. So, And plus with Q as well, like you are able to one-hit them after the take a tower hit. So I don't know why you're going to mess around with that. Just try to remember the pattern for CSing under tower. You're in gold. You should be able to do this. Yeah. Now Fiora wants to go for the pushing advantage into you by building Tiamat. So you should be able to spot that coming. I mean, his bot side, so you don't have to worry about being ganked at this present minute. Which means you can freely be a presence in lane and do your thing. Which I believe is what you're looking at here. I won't lie, they're constantly losing your bone plating by walking up and taking like simple poke that isn't necessary. It's going to hurt you. Remember, after that shield expires, you are still going to get hit by minions. So don't forget to dodge into the bush. Good poke. See, the moment his repost goes down, you can more than likely just go for your ulti without too much trouble either. Also, the fact you didn't buy a control ward on this back kind of irks me a little. I sense you're looking for an opportunity to roam. But you have to actually be able to commit to it without what... Okay, I'm a little awkward on this. And by a little, I mean a lot. <laughs> I don't see the point of this teleport. This teleport doesn't isn't like in service of any like gank at all. This was a silly teleport. I don't even understand why. Like you had a lane that you could maintain and you wanted to wait for the... Well, at least the Hecarim's on the ball here. But yeah, you wanted to wait for the for the objective to be in play, like Dragon, etc. Before you even thought about going for that teleport play. This was just silly. You actually almost entered that away, but you're lucky that Hecarim was actually smart enough to come up and like do something about it. <laughs> if you wanted to make use of the teleport like cooldown advantage that you had, it's fine. Like You had the right idea, but your execution was just absolutely poor. I said, it's only lucky that Hecarim was awake to that and actually came through and dealt with it. Though it is a bit interesting that you and uh, you and Corky have switched sides now. Switched lanes. You get a free turret plate though, which is always nice. <laughs> but yeah, still incredibly iffy on that. What did you say damage from? Oh, you must have undid something. Still no control wards to boot. Getting very angry at this. So, despite your two assists, you are still behind in CS. So, the gold difference is non-existent in top lane. It's all really just weighed down on the jungler and the bot lane right here. <laughs> that's the big, that's the only, like, thing that's keeping you ahead. So, you aren't, you aren't really, like, benefiting your team at all in any way here. As I said, it was definitely in your hands to do so. It's just that your your timing was just way off. I 
I so I, I would totally like be okay with the the CS like loss that you'd be sitting on right now. This is good trading. Nice work. I'm lucky if you're no vital. <laughs> Honestly, if you had your ulti there, it was doable, but unfortunately you did not, so that's okay. Like, there was a reach attempt you could have made to get that if, like, Fiora didn't play it smartly into you, but it's too hard to really gauge that in gold because she might be smart enough to actually flash away from you for starters. And, like, trading flashes isn't the coolest thing in the world. Like, you probably could still go for it and trade the flash out because you're Camille and she's Fiora and you have a better escape, but it's really just more about understanding where and how you can uh, manage your cooldowns against that because she could still turn that on you. It appears they got Rift Herald. Which is kind of awkward when you think about it considering that you had the ability to send uh, Fiora, uh, Fiora home, but instead her and Mimu actually went and took... Rift Herald because there's no wards on that side of the of the map at all. The good news is that at least Hecarim is still absolutely gutter stomping this map. She has the Rift Herald now though, which means she can't ward, which is kind of helpful, but yeah. That's some thoughts. We're looking at the dive, are we? <laughs> But yeah, the issue with, like, bone plating is going to keep falling off in this manner because of the way that you're handling this. Well, that's free. Uh, you should have just ultied that instead of e but that's okay. I would have, yeah, if you just ultied that, like, front up, just to stop her, like, even if she flashes, she doesn't get away from you and you just kill her, then you can take tower for free. And you really want those tyro plates to matter for it. Eh. I mean, yeah. But... Nah, you could have done that without having to use your flash if you just ulted last time. <laughs> but yeah, at least while Hecarim was still there as well, then you could just get the tower for free. Like, this is all, like, you got to think of it like this, right? If you don't have to spend all these resources to get to get these kills that you could have, like, you know, worked with before, then there would be other ways you could, like, use those resources in the next five minutes. And that would, like, that would make a benefit. There would, there would be a difference there, right? There would be something you could work with. But unfortunately, we're just not getting that. We're not getting no, we're not getting any added benefit from your from your plays here. <clears throat> so you're not getting the best out of uh, out of your lane phase. Especially in a matchup that like you can totally make up for skill wise. Corky's out. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, despite the hefty lead you're sitting on at the moment, I'm not really I'm not sold that this is going to go particularly well. It's nice that Fiora does keep walking into your free trade without reposting you on on the comeback. Shut down. <laughs> so yeah, tire plates have fallen off now, so no added gold is available. We only got Triforce though, so your dueling capability is huge. Oh, if you just waited, you were fine for that. This is what inting looks like right here. She did it so early too, and you still played into it. That's the part that bugs me. More than anything else is that you actually still played into her repost. Like, <clears throat> you're watching this play out, right? It's awkward enough to take a trade on Tara without actually going for anything. You just took, like, free hits from that. See, 
the thing is, right? You know she's going to walk out and do this repose to stop you from doing anything. Which means from there, you don't have to actually bother with this trade. But, like, her repost cooldown is immediately, like, higher. Like, it's, it's like, what, 20 seconds? So, why not just eat out, especially with her ulti on you, and then you can just wait, come back in, and kill her. Like, that's it. You don't have to automatically fight into the all-in every single time. Like, I don't understand why people do this. They think it's such a smart, like, thing to do because they're ahead, but they immediately cost themselves everything they have because they've wasted their cooldowns into nothing, and it just gets them killed. Even if there's a trade. It's a trade that is unnecessary. <laughs> We've teleported in. We've been stopped by Leona. I mean, at least your bot lane is absolutely fragging, so no issue there. <laughs> I feel like this game was not the best to send in. <laughs> Just seems like this game has already been hard won. But I remember looking at the scoreboard and wondering what the hell happened like in the mid game, so yeah. <laughs> see what happens. We shall see. <laughs> We've basically taken away everything from this. We've had the dragons, we've got the mid towers. Fire rises. Okay. Now what are you going to do is the question. <laughs> CS is still absolutely abysmal, given the, the state of the game. Another roam? I mean, don't get me wrong, I get why as an answer. I don't understand why you're not just going for the ulti earlier. Like, I get that you know that your damage is high enough to get through this, but if you're so worried about, like, getting through this, why do you have to keep washing your, wait, wasting, wasting your flash ult? It's just such an unnecessary thing, right? But you keep doing it over and over again because you don't actually understand how much damage your character deals. However, if you were good enough to actually get the CS that you're supposed to get at this point in time and not take up that silly death, then the truthful matter is that you would have had enough items to actually do that without your ulti. So whether you were just planning it out terribly or just not actioning on it effectively, that is what we'll have to figure out. But for now, I would hope you don't keep tanking the entire... Oh God, you just tanked their entire team. That's why I'm flinching is a good idea, by the way. And that's also why being able to E out of that situation or flash out of that situation will also help. But yes, that is a lovely throw. That is a very lovely throw. Oh dear, that was silly. You already got the tower, you didn't need to go for another one. I don't understand why you would even bother for that. Like, Hecarim went and got Rift Herald, it was perfect. But, yeah, we decided we had to stay topside and get ourselves killed. I've got no clue why. Gigantic overstay for no reason whatsoever. Not happy, Jan.
another free kill on a really bad Fiora. Which honestly, it's what makes me even more mad that you actually got solo killed by her because it was like just a giant mistake you made. Ugh. I mean, this game basically wins itself from here, provided you all just, you know, do the right thing in mid-game, which is, you know, not int like you just did, and just have vision and just take down every, like, objective on the map systematically. Not a particularly difficult thing to do. Right? Right? My eyes are indeed glazing over at the amount of deadness going on in this game. <laughs> I assume Baron is clearly takeable given the actual amount of items your team is sporting. Have you still not bought a goddamn control ward yet? Come on, man. He's going to ult you. I don't know why you would walk into that. You could have actually juked that uh, that damage by ulting someone earlier by walking closer, but now you're still tanking. You're tanking Baron, dude! You're tanking Baron! Oh, God, you actually survived that. I can't even believe. Don't do it. You're going to get killed. If she attack moves on the spot, she will kill you. Just go home. What are you even bothering for? The moment like she spots you, she can literally just attack move on the spot and it will kill you. Oh. Mm -mm. Man, you are you are a very heavy top laner to carry at this point. Just a lot of silly mistakes. This teleport I roll with. Bonus points if you get behind Caitlyn. Yes. Perfect. Easy fucking peasy. Actual correct use of everything you had there. Thank God, there is potential. But yes, teleported in behind her while she was still hanging around. Dragon was the key objective that was available here. You got behind her. She will use the flash and you eat over the wall to get her. That's perfect. That's exactly what you want. Every situation. It's good forced skirmishing. Nice work. The question is, do you actually manage to mess this up again by throwing a second time, or...? Like, surely from here you just get Baron for free on your next, like, rotation, right? You've got the inhib. Actually, you've got dead people, you're just gonna take the base? Oh, hang on. Oh no, no, never mind, the Rift Herald is taking care of that for- Oh no, you didn't just go for the tower! Why didn't we just go for the tower? Why? <laughs> what the hell, man? All you had to do was just go for the tower. Oh, shit. All you had to do was go for the tower, then fucking go away. What? What the hell was the point of that? Now they're actually staying for mid. There's actually a high chance they could throw Baron. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm uh, I'm very, very scared. He just had to ulti away from that, and now they're at Baron. Oh, no. Is that what a throw looks like? Yep, that's what a throw looks like. Oh, that's a really terrible play. Didn't even have to eat away from that. Nice work.
Hmm. Now, I'm hoping that if you just shove the waves up and, like, force them to Baron, you will automatically win. Or Kaiser can just int. That seems like a cool idea, too. Though I feel like some communication about Baron would have been a good idea here, but I can't tell if that happened because we're obviously looking at a spectator game, not a no in-game, like, comms or movement uh, to be seen, unfortunately. Once again, you're very separated from your team. Hopefully you will make it back in time. So if you're any closer to having your thingo back, you'd be in a good spot. I'm not entirely sure I agree with the executioner's calling here. There's no gigantic reason to have it. Honestly, into this team, I would have gone um, unflinching and QSS, as well as uh, Mercs, I think. Just would have felt better overall about the situation we were in. Dead. This is silly. This This whole play was just silly. Even though you got exhausted and, like, you feel bad about it, sure, but that this was just silly. I don't even understand how the hell this, like, had to turn around and blow up in your face like this. Like, you have the advantage across the map. You have bot side available. You, all you have to do is make it go into their towers, and then you just force that into Baron. That's all you do. That's all you have to do. It's very easy. But instead, every single person on your team, you included, insists on going in one by one and trying to 1v5 their team. I don't understand why. What benefit does that give anyone? <laughs> I mean, Infernal Soul will be alright, I suppose, but you're not going to get it because they're going to come down and they have Baron. Yeah, they got Baron, uh, Dragon as well. I mean, you have to sacrifice that one just because. It's so awkward knowing that a 1-3-1 is viable for your team because they are obviously a better team fighting comp and you don't want to force yourself into that. So having them like, you know, having your team deal with that would be like a thing. The problem is you don't have any wave clear to like, deal with them running it down mid as well so you kind of just kind of the only way to win is by forcing skirmishes but you don't get any added benefit of that if you just keep running into their team fight mechanics so color me very very awkward about this particular stage of life that you're in I say is it about to get caught out alone for this Lovely CC lock. Very well done by you and Nautilus there. Ah, so maybe it actually gets caught out after all is said and done. I can't believe after all that they end up throwing this hard. I don't even want to know what the hell's going on there. So the enemy throws with Baron. Man, this is what ELO Heaven looks like. You literally make all these mistakes early game and the enemy team just insists on throwing it back to you. It's like, well, I don't want to win. You take it. No, you take it. No, you take it. I'm feeling nice today. I'm feeling generous today. And scene. <laughs> Once again, the state of fights that don't lead into anything just only makes the shit worse over and over again. Because you take all these fights, you spend all these cooldowns and resources 
even though they're the enemy team, it just gets caught out, and there's no actual attempt of working towards um, the objectives that matter the most, so like the inhibitors, the extra towers, things like Baron. It's just only made worse by the fact that we're not doing anything as a team in this game. <sighs> Pardon me, just resting my eyes. I mean, I'm stoked that you can just keep catching them out and properly using your uh, your RQ, your R, sorry, your QRQ like auto reset into like exploding damage combo. I'm glad you're actually able to do that to delete a carry every single time, and I'm glad for it. But I feel like every other situation outside of that, you're just not like doing your damage effectively, and you just keep getting caught out after the fact. You have to be in then out, my mans. In and then out. Also, I'm a little confused as to, as to the lack of Death Dance in your item build. I feel like Death Dance second is, in a dueling sense would have been a better idea. Or at least after Tiamat you'd get Death Dance. Just because it will save you a lot of trouble. Especially in mid-game team fights. Yeah, part of it. But yeah, I'm very, very awkward on that. And out we go again. Can't chase you past the tower, because lucky day, there's still a tower in bot side. That's how hard your bot lane won. Now, hopefully, with your teleport, and with a bit of half-decent, like, attempts around the map, I just realized you have blue trick instead of yellow, and you haven't warded anything since, and you have no control wards. God damn it. Vision control is so abysmal from you, this game, my dude. That needs to get fixed, 100%. No point in split pushing without any vision, which is why you need both yellow yellow trinket and control wards. <sighs> Am I actually right in believing that you haven't placed a single control ward this game, let alone bought one? Or bought, let alone placed, rather? I said, if the plan is to like bust the Mumu out of this fight, then you will be in a good spot. Unfortunately, the both you both you and Fiora get absolutely mowed down by the by respective teams. Corky got soul. You trade three for three. The Nautilus still won't work. Never mind. You just got ruined. Wait, he flashed. Why did he flash? There was no need to flash. You just had to take the death. It was smarter. It was either flash out of the Leona E coming at him or just don't do it. <sighs> so there goes the turret. I'm now going for Death's Dance, which is a bit late, but you know what? Cool. CS is still falling way behind, but at least you have Infernal Soul now. So that's always helpful. Your damage more than makes up for everything you're in situation wise right now. You just need to have like, so you would just need to have death stance completed. And then possibly like possibly QSS would be a good idea into this just because Amumu and the owner are horrible. Again, there's still no vision on either side of the map. Baron is about to be up. We've got Death Dance at least. Do you have a control ward? No. Do we have a hope in the freaking universe? No. Wait. Why did Kaiser ulti? Better yet, why did you telly? 
I feel like you could have just walked bot and just forced them out, but... Yeah, I mean, without vision it only makes it worse. At least Caitlyn's dead though, which helps, but... Oh... That looked like it hurt. You have taken a stupid amount of damage from Baron this game. In all the fights that have revolved around it. I don't see why we're not just going through bot lane and ending. I don't think Caitlyn on her own can actually kill all of you. But I mean, if this is where you guys have to be safe about this, then so be it. But it doesn't make me feel any better about it at all. I'm very confused. I am so confused about this game. There's only one Nexus Tire and the bottom inhibitor is naked. Why not just go there and just take and finish that game? Put this put this absolute mystery to, to rest. Sweet lord. Okay, at least you reacted fast enough to just E out this time rather than actually bothering to hang around. Mm hmm. Easy damage. Did you just do it again? Did you just ulti into a silly spot under the tower and almost kill yourself again? That's what, the fourth, fifth time? At least you got their entire base. I'm just still, I'm just still absolutely mystified as to why we weren't just going for the things that were readily available and easy to take. It's very, very silly to ever like, sort of look at the map and just go, "Yep, I'm going to take the hardest route possible to the Nexus because why not?" I'm not going to finish the game. I'm going to just party about the map and have a good time. That's what we'll call it. We'll call it party, party Camille or party whatever character it is. It's just. Uh, instead of just doing what's necessary, I just want to go and have parties at random places on the map. The literal zoomer, zoomer mental of uh, of League of Legends Season 10. <laughs> it's the way it is. It's 100% the way it is right now. Freaking awkward way to go, if I'm being honest with you. Where are we gonna go with this? We were just we're ping and bot inhibitor thinking that it's a good idea to take it. That should have been the case about ten minutes ago, but you know what, that's okay. Team fights have made it incredibly easy when you actually don't have to worry about the split of anything. One hit Soriana, fucking good champion by the way. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm just glad the game is over. Assassinato triple. Assassinato quadruple. Fragging. What a strange game. There were just so many easy ways to get through that game, and that and the, this is the route we ended up in. And what? Whenever you see this, the, these comparative notes in your in your Blister GG, you've got to understand just exactly how hard carried you were by your team. If you won an early game gold, but you lost in CS, that is you 100% being carried. Regardless of like any percentage or anything you're looking at, that is 100% you just not contributing to the state of the game whatsoever in the early game. You're just like, if you're just going through the motions and doing willy nilly shit that you're hoping is going to pay off and it does, and it might in like some really awkward circumstance. Okay, look, the fact that you bought two control wards this game is mystifying to me because I don't even recall seeing them. That's how lackluster your vision was this game. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel like you bought one in lane phase, and then if you bought another one later on and vended it, I don't even know. Hang on. We've we got place to trinket. Where, where's the control wards? Let's see. You placed a control ward at... So, post 25 minutes is when we remember to place control wards. 
Those were your two control wards after you destroyed the inhibitor. And I'm pretty sure one of those control wards was topside, but I don't want to remember for sure. Hang on, let's double check. I'm curious now. When do you actually... Oh, here we go. This is when the water's in your inventory. You place it in top lane, try. Okay. Cool. It's around Baron. Credit where credit is due. You actually did something useful with that. Not the greatest place to put it. I would have rather have been on a defensive spot on your side. And it also leads to you guys throwing around Baron and them clearing your vision anyway. So do you buy another ward is the question? You do. Where does it go? It goes in Dragon Pit. Okay. So, both in places where they were about to get mowed up by your team's silly decisions. I won't be too hard on the second one, but the point still stands. Waiting 25 minutes to buy a control ward is just stupid. Don't ever do that. Buy them often. Buy them to get to your objectives. And then, for the love of... For the love of all that is cute and fluffy, please do not spend your teleport for, like, silly engagements that don't matter. You did one perfectly good flank... And that should be a that should set a precedent for how you should use your teleports generally. Follow that idea. Do it. So much better. Please. You'll feel better for it in the long run. Seeing stats like this is awful when you think about the way your like CS and gold racked up this game. You could have done way better with your CS by just properly doing the split push and properly taking care of your lane and functioning effectively in that. But unfortunately, every single time we like, watched it all pan out. I just felt really awkward about every situation that you got yourself into. Your early game trades were all right until you decided that like you just you you overreached for like the idea that you can save your cooldowns later on, but you don't actually weigh weigh that up against the fact that you're behind on items. Like I get that you're you think you're doing okay, right? Like you you're ahead in kills, you have assists, the enemy has died. But if, you, if you're still the same amount of gold, like, uh, sorry, still the same amount of CS, less CS, or like the same amount of gold as your enemy laner, and it gets to a point where you're actually like only racking up anything different from that, and you go in for a kill without your cooldowns ready, you're going to lose. Like, Fiora is one of those characters that is capable of turning that around against you. You have the upright burst to deal with that, the upfront burst to deal with it, but you just, you're not going to win if you don't do it effectively. Oh, Executioner's Calling was pointless against this team, truthfully. I would have rather you gone for Death Dance second and then, or, or go for Tiamat then Death Dance and then not worrying about finishing the uh, the Hydra unless you were going to properly split push, which you didn't. You were looking for skirmishes and you did all right with that. But yeah, you would have survived better in team fights if you actually did have the Death Dance. <sighs> you were way too reliant on your jungler in early game. There were things you could have done on your own to make up for that. I'd recommend rewatching this video consistently and figuring that out. Other than that, it's not a bad showing, but it could definitely be better. Either way, thank you very much, Andrew, for your video submission. I hope to see another one from you in the future. Thank you to everyone that watched today. Don't forget in the comments, not the comments, or leave, or leave a comment if you enjoyed it, or don't forget to like and subscribe. The other thing as well is, if you do want to get a VOD review done, in the description there is a link to my Discord. Come and see me if you want to get a VOD review done. These are free. These are like part of a bigger project that I am doing to help better the community. So please, go right ahead and get involved with that. Thank you very much for coming today. My name is Rec9. Love you all, and of course, best to you. Bye-bye.